Hello and welcome to the Maker's Muse review of the pre-production Trinus 3D printer. I know heaps of you guys have been waiting for this review and yes, I am still sick. I am still not in Sydney, but time marches on. There's only a few days left in the Trinus Kickstarter campaign. So what are we waiting for? Let's get into it. Welcome back guys. So before I get into anything about this amazing little 3D printer, I need to mention some really important facts. Number one, this is a pre-production unit. So the fact that there's actually a unit in front of me in the first place when a Kickstarter campaign is still going on is actually quite frankly amazing. But the fact is this is pre-production. It's been hand assembled. This is not the final unit from Kodama Inc. This is not the final Trinus by any means. So in terms of me saying this is a review, keep in mind that this is, again, pre-production. What I've experienced with this unit, which has been mostly positive, is going to be quite different to what you get in your final unit. And the fact is, I'm testing this out to help the guys at Kadama Inc. improve the Trinus further, so when you get your backed machine, you're going to get an awesome little bit of kit. So what are you expecting out of this review then? Well. Hopefully most of you guys will catch this before the end of the Kickstarter campaign, but I guess you're maybe on the fence as to whether you should back the Trinus or you've already backed it and you're wondering just have you made the right decision? So what I'm hopefully going to do is answer some of those questions and go through my list of, uh, of things that I'm going to cover in terms of this machine and how I would assess it in terms of it being a pre-production unit. So I've got here assembly and instructions, build quality, noises and vibrations, printer specifications, print quality, and customer support, as well as the flexibility of the platform, and finally, my final thoughts on value for money for the Trinus 3D printer. So let's start off with assembly and instructions. I am happy to say that despite the Trinus being a 3D printer kit, it went together beautifully. This is probably the most joy and fun I've had out of assembling any sort of mechanical kit ever. And I, I'm saying that completely from my own perspective and my own opinion. Each of these units goes together with threaded holes. There is no nuts except for a few tiny nuts on the control board, which you're, actually, you're not actually meant to undo anyway. So everything is threaded. The base plate is thick steel. The, the aluminium components are quite thick and everything is threaded together with these nice machine screws. The machine comes with the Allen keys you need to put it together. And the instructions, considering, again, pre-production, were fantastic. And the thing about the instructions is, even though they're pretty good now, they will improve further. So once you get your kit, they're going to be great. And I think anyone of any skill level will be able to put together their Trinus with no issues. There's no soldering, nothing like that. So massive top marks in terms of assembly, ease of assembly, and instructions. So well done there for the Kadama team. Next is build quality. So a lot of people were drawn to the, the Trinus by the look of it, the build quality of it, and I'm happy to say that, yeah, the base is thick steel, the linear ways are thick machined aluminium, the rods are 8mm steel, and everything else is either sheet steel folded or machined aluminium. And for a machine of this size and this price point, that is really unusual. Often you'll see plastic injection molded components, or you'll see thin, flimsy, sheet metal components, or worst case, you'll see 3D printed components. And the only 3D printed component in this whole machine is the little fan duct within the extruder assembly. And that's fair enough because reproduction. So top marks to Trinus and the Kadama team for making this machine super rugged. It is ridiculously overbuilt. And I can just demonstrate that by forci forcibly moving my hand across this guide. And that's the amount of flex I can get out of this machine, this machine in total. Rubber feet, so vibrations pretty much nullified across the, uh, the platform it's sitting on. It's, it's nuts. So yeah, this is definitely the most overbuilt and heavy duty platform 3D printer I've ever worked on. <laughs> no doubt about that. Next we come to noises and vibrations. So as I said, the Trinus platform is super rigid and robust. So you're not going to get any resonances that you get out of machines with a, with a plastic cover or anything like that. However, that's not to say this machine is not noisy. It's, 
it's got the standard NEMA 17 step motors, so you get the NEMA 17 step motor wine that you might be used to out of other 3D printers, but also because it has lead screws, there's an interesting kind of noise it makes changing directions, and it's not loud, but it does have that whine to it. So I'm, I'm gonna play some a, a clip of, of the noises it makes. It was just some interesting sort of noises it made during circles and, and fills. It sounded like a sort of a, a dove or something, which is pretty funny. But uh, it's definitely not the loudest 3D printer I've ever worked on, but it's definitely not the quietest. So in terms of deadening vibrations, the platform does a great job, but there is still some sounds that come out of it, which is fair enough. In terms of printer specifications, the actual bed size is pretty small. You're looking at 120 by 125 by 125. It's pretty small. It's about the same size as an up mini 3D printer. So keeping in mind, you're not gonna be printing very large things off this machine. Also, the print speed tops out at 70 millimeters per second, according to their specifications. And that's because of the lead screw design. You can't run lead screws as fast as you can run uh, timing belts. So timing belts run faster with less precision, lead screws run slower with more precision. That's why 3D printers usually have lead screws on their Z-axis only. So there's positives and negatives to that. The machine is more precise, but it runs at a slower speed. So that's why I think the build volume is a good size for this design. Any bigger and your prints would take quite a long time. And I don't really see it being much of a benefit to run this kind of system on a platform that's larger than this. And further on the printer specifications, it comes stock with a non-heated acrylic bed. So this acrylic bed's been laser cut and laser etched with a nice little grid pattern, and they put some sort of glue on top, and the PLA prints stick quite nicely to it. However, it does not come with a heated bed as standard. And in my opinion, the heated bed add-on is comes across as a bit of an afterthought, and I'll explain why. Basically, you have a heated bed with its own power supply and own contained system to maintain temperature between two settings. So that means the system, the actual Trinus motherboard, can't understand if the bed's at temperature. So it's a little bit similar, again, making a comparison to the Up Mini printer. The Up Mini heated bed is self-contained, heats up to 50 degrees stock. So if your print head is already at temperature, it won't wait for the heated bed to be at temperature. So again, this may change, but as it is at the moment, I feel the heated bed is useful, but not fully integrated into the system as I would kind of want it to be. But if you're only printing in PLA, you don't need a heated bed. I had no issues printing PLA parts, although I'll go into that a little bit more why I don't have many examples to show you. Another thing to mention is the bed leveling. So basically this machine is so small and the, the actual design is so rigid, there is no bed leveling options in the Trinus, at least not in the pre-production stage. And Again, making the correlation again to the Atmini, because they're very similar machines in, in terms of print volume, you don't really need it. I mean, the bed's so small, the machine's so rigid, that any deviation is going to be very small, and I can't see it being an issue. I can actually see adding a bed leveling system making it worse, possibly. So, some people are concerned about this. I would say don't worry about it, because it's a very small platform, and it's a very accurate machine. So, I don't think you're going to have any issues with an unlevel bed, unless your acrylic plate is actually warped in which case I'm sure you'd be able to get a second, another one from the, the Kadama team very easily. So the China system has Pango as their slicing software. And a lot of people in their Kickstarter campaign have been commenting as to, you know, what's this software like and can I run other software? Is it Linux supported? So basically my, my first look at, at Pango, it looks quite good. It's still quite basic in terms of its slicing capabilities, but this is where I ran into some issues. When I went to home my machine in the Pango software, it homes all axes uh, one after the other. So it homes the X, Y, and Z, or Z axis. For some reason, it would home the X and the Y, but then the Z wouldn't home. And after a little bit of trial and troubleshooting, I found out that the Y and Z axis limit switches were shorted to each other on the print board. So essentially, those two input pins were shorted somewhere along possibly the vias I tried to track it down, which meant that if the Y axis was homed and parked on the limit switch, it couldn't home Z and vice versa. And as I said, I'm not currently in Sydney. I don't have any of my soldering, uh, high-end surface mount soldering equipment. So that was a bit of a bummer and a little bit disappointing considering the machine was meant to be tested. Although to be fair, it is hard to determine that kind of false positive when you have two limit switches and one can influence the other. So, 
I sort of slept on it and one day trying to figure out how I could turn this around. And I decided, you know, I got Repetier on my, on my laptop. Let's try running the, the Trinus on Repetier. And yeah, this machine runs off Repetier fine. No problems at all. And all the prints I've done have been done using Repetier software, which is great because a lot of people are worried about the Pango software not working on Linux. Repetier does. So there's your solution right there. You can run this machine on other slices, no issues at all. And to get around the limit switch issue, I basically just homed the Y-axis manually. I took the, I sort of screwed the switch off and would press it at the right place. Bit dodgy, I know, but to get this review out there in time before the campaign ended, that's what I did, and it works fine. So, with all that out of the way, how does this thing print? Well, pretty damn good, okay? So, I haven't had much time. I only had about 24 hours to play with it, and as I said, 70 millimeters per second is the limit speed. I went up to 55, and even I found that a little bit jerky. But, you know, I did this little Marvin, and he looks great. At 200 micron layer height in their aluminum PLA mix, he looks fantastic. Also, similarly, I did a calibration cube in the Polymax white PLA, and it looks flawless. No issues at all with that. And yeah, to be honest, it's what I expected. This machine is so rock solid and rigid, I don't think you'd have any issues making precise prints off it. It's not gonna be the fastest 3D printer you've ever owned, it's not gonna be anything special, but in terms of rock solid small prints, it really has its place. And you know, this thing, I'm traveling back to Sydney in a few days, I'm gonna pack it back up to the box it came with and take it back. And I can't think of any other 3D printer that I could do that with. So what about customer support? Well, as I said, I ran into the homing issue and I am happy to say that the Kadama team are amazing guys. They basically stepped up above and beyond to help me get this machine back up and running. They sent me the, the layout of the circuit board to pinpoint certain areas I could check and Unfortunately, the print board, the, the main PCB, is so tightly designed that using a, a, a knife to cut the vise and try to remove the short was just, I couldn't do it where I am. But they were really good. They've been in touch with me the whole step of the way, and I have another motherboard on its way to replace, but it's not going to get here in time for the, for the Kickstarter campaign to end. So they have been amazing. And if you look at the Kickstarter comments, they've been answering everyone, like, every few hours, which is... is almost unheard of from uh, Kickstarter team. So yeah, in terms of support from the actual team, I think they've done an amazing job. They're, they're really proven that they care about their customers. And the fact is, they were sitting in on my stream. So when I was assembling this thing, they were sitting in on my stream, taking in your comments. Someone suggested stickers for axes because the two Z axes, only one has a limit switch and I made a bit of a mistake. I was very sick and I was streaming at the same time. I made a mistake and put two limit switches on the Zs. And someone was like, you should put a sticker on that to indicate which one doesn't have the limit switch. And they're like, yeah, good idea. So that's awesome. And I think that's the beauty of Kickstarter because you can actually have a, an input into the final design. And the fact is, they've already got the base machine, so it can only really improve from there, which is really, really quite cool. And you can actually be a part of that, which I already really love. And then there's flexibility. So yes, the Trinus is a 3D printer but it's also a laser engraver. So I don't have the laser engraver head for this machine because it's still got a lot, lot of ways to go in terms of accreditation and safety and all that. Lasers are a little bit more dangerous than a 3D printer head, but you can laser engrave with your Trinus by replacing the head. And they're talking about a possible CNC milling bit head as well, which is really, really cool. So machine is rigid enough to take all of those attachments. And something that you may have not even thought of is this is an open platform to kind of do what you want with. So don't like 3D printing, don't like laser engraving, you could put a paste extruder on this. There's only four mounting points to remove this aluminium plate, take the head off, and you get access to a stepper driver and a FET to control something on and off. So maybe a heater, maybe a laser, maybe a heater for a chocolate extruder, I don't know. But you could use this little, little platform for heaps of things, which is really, really neat. So that's something else you may not have thought of. The flexibility of this platform is Massive potentials are huge because it's so open and easy to work with. Okay, so now we come to the final category, value for money. This is very subjective, and usually people ask me which is the best 3D printer to get, should I get this one or that one? I usually can't answer that question because it's very much down to your own needs and specifications and what you want out of a 3D printer. But from my personal view on the value for money on the Trinus, I see this, and I've said it before, I see this as an open platform. I don't 
I don't think a lot of people would be buying this just as a 3D printer. I think they'll be buying this as an entry level CNC platform to do whatever you will with it. You can 3D print awesome things with high detail, you can laser engrave, or you could just use the inexpensive slides it's coming with, which are really, really nice, as I said. NEMA 17s, lead screw, eight mil rods, linear bearings, and aluminum backing plates. You could use these for almost anything. You could pretty much take one of them and make your own SLA printer by using it for the Z. You could, as I said, put a chocolate extruder on it. You could make your own bar bot. I think, I mean, this is something that from my view, it's just, it's a kit. It's a CNC kit that's extremely low cost for what you're getting. So yeah, in my point of view, the Trinus is an exceptionally good value for money product. And I have not been paid to say that. You know, the Kodama team have been awesome, but I've been very clear from the outset that this is a non-biased review as, as it will always be on Maker's Muse. And I am extremely excited to see where this company goes because as their first product, they have nailed it. And if we see more things from these guys, I think it's just gonna be, be better and better. So that basically concludes my pre-production review of the Trinus. And yes, I'm not gonna lie, I was a little bit disappointed about the Z-axis problem. But to be fair, these guys are in pre-production stage and this is something you're never gonna experience in the retail version. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see future 3D printing videos on Makers Muse, please don't forget to subscribe. It really does help me a lot. I really enjoy doing this, even if I'm still sick and not even in Sydney. You know, I, I try to bring you the best content I can in the 3D printing world. And I hope that you guys see this before the end of the Kickstarter campaign for the Trinus because I think it's an amazing machine and I'm really looking forward to seeing how well these guys go. Over $1 million backed, over 1 million bucks. So well done Kadama Inc. And thank you very much guys for watching. I'll see you again very shortly here on Maker's Muse. Bye. All right guys, so I know a lot of you have been asking, so who am I to disappoint? This is the extruder and I opened it up. First impressions, super overbuilt. Huge aluminium plate separating the Ceph motor from the actual extrusion assembly. It has a springed lever, which looks like it's machined Derelin or something like that, uh, onto a spur gear style feeder gear. So lots of, lots of torque biting into your filament. Uh, again, the Trinus is 1.75 millimeter diameter filament. Looks like it feeds into quite a large Teflon, it looks like a Teflon sleeve or some sort of high temp plastic, feeding down again through a very large heat break with machined aluminium fins, so it's a heat sink. And then down into the hot end, looks like a custom nozzle, they're quite large. And I, I can't quite tell if that's bronze or stainless steel, brass or stainless steel, sorry. Uh, it could be stainless steel, it's got the right color, but it could be coated. I may be wrong, get the Trinus guys to confirm that. But if it is stainless steel, it means you can do abrasive materials, which is very, very cool. Uh, very, fairly standard heater block clamped in there. So it looks like a bit of a hybrid of lots of different extruder designs on the market, but definitely looks house made. This just does, it doesn't look like they've just grabbed an E3D from some Chinese factory and slapped it in. This is definitely designed from scratch based off existing, existing designs, but obviously improved on. So top marks to these guys for designing this. The only complaint I could possibly say, I noticed during printing, is the fan duct itself doesn't appear to put much airflow onto the filament, so I noticed a bit of drooping on the undersides of the PLA prints. Again, I only tested some tiny, tiny prints. Didn't have much time, but that would be my only thing for them to change. The, the actual fan duct is quite cool. It's been sectioned off, so some of it cools the, the motor itself and some of it goes onto the print. So yeah, my only advice to the Trinus guys would be to somehow add some airflow for PLA prints, but also the ability to block this off if you're printing in ABS using the heated bed, because you're still gonna to need to cool the step motor, but you're not going to wanna to cool the print bed, because then you'll start getting warping in ABS. So you need some way of blocking it off. I don't know, the, the UPS use a little hinged duct. I don't know what the best solution would be here, but yeah, all in all, amazing extruder design. That is super chunky, super well built, and looks awesome, so sleek.